You will see from the SAGs that this section counts 30 marks in your paper, so 15% of your paper for momentum, impulse, work, energy, and power. Now, the first thing we have to look at is just plain momentum. Now, please do not make this overcomplicated. If they just ask for momentum, it's straightforward, the product of the mass and the velocity of the object at that point. So it's just going to be using this equation, P equals M times by V. When the question asks for change in momentum, now be careful, because if you look at this equation, momentum is a vector, as it says there. And mass is a scalar, velocity is again a vector. So the mass is basically constant of the object. So if we want to work out the change in momentum, the mass is still this, going to stay the same, but then we're going to look at the change in the velocity. And because it's a vector here, you must be very careful to put the sign in. If something is hitting a wall and you decide that the initial velocity in that direction is positive, you need to remember, and don't just guess specifically in a multiple choice question, you need to remember that the velocity then leaving the wall is going to be negative. And even if these velocities are the same, the change in velocity is not going to be zero. Please remember that. And therefore, the change in momentum will not be zero. So if we have 10 meters per second moving towards the wall and 10 meters per second moving away from the wall for a one kilogram object, it will be one. And this will be final minus initial. So it will be minus 10 minus 10, which gives us an answer of minus 10 which should show you that because we, our initial velocity to the right was positive, that this change in momentum is away from the wall. And also please use English when you explain these um, answers. So very important, that answer would mean nothing if it doesn't have a unit. And for momentum, it's a derived unit because it's mass and velocity. It's going to be kilograms, meters per second for the unit for momentum, as well as the unit for change in momentum. So when you give an answer for change in momentum, remember, do not leave it as a negative. You're going to interpret that negative as a direction because momentum and change in momentum is a vector quantity. Now moving on to Newton's second law, because there we need the change in momentum. So you already know that Newton's second law says F net equals MA. Now, if we change that a little bit and say acceleration is the change in the velocity over the change in the time, which you know since grade eight, we can then say, look at the top what we have here. If we go back quickly, you can see that we actually, m delta v is delta p. So it is the change in momentum. So at the top of the line, we actually get the change in momentum over the change in time. And you are very welcome to state Newton's second law in terms of momentum, because if you look at this equation, it makes it so much easier, because all you're going to say is the net force acting on an object is equal to, because there's an equal sign, the rate, because there's a delta T at the bottom, the rate of, and then you look what's at the top, change in momentum. And the, it's one definition, again, that you don't have to learn because it's on your information sheet. Now, looking further at this change in momentum, you will see that many of your equations on your information sheet involves this, because now we have that F net is delta P over delta T. So we can change that equation around and say that the net force, so F net, times by the time that the object is experiencing that net force is equal to the change in the momentum, just swapping the maths around. And when you have it in this form, it actually gives us the definition of impulse. So this is, and you have a symbol for impulse now that is J. So um, impulse is equal to the change in momentum is equal to F net delta T. But we've already got that it's also equal to m delta v. Please, in an exam, remember that all these equations are actually impulse equations. So impulse and change in momentum is exactly the same thing. So you can use any of those equations. So what I would like you to do when you get your information sheet 
you have F net delta T equals M delta V here. But I want you to make a big equal sign between these two columns because all these two are equal to any of the, these stating impulse. Big trick, please, please. Now the questions that come up about impulse are often explanation questions and you know that you are not amazing at those. So I'm going to quickly look at the two scenarios that they could give you. Now these questions are always asked and they, not always, but when they are asked, they normally ask you to refer to an equation on the information sheet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it up into the questions that's talking about you hurting less. So people wearing um, safety belts, crumple zones in cars, uh, bulletproof vests. There's copious amounts of these examples. If you want to hurt less, you need to think what is causing the hurt. If you look at the moment, they're going to say use an appropriate equation or they're going to say use momentum or they're going to say use impulse to explain why people hurt less when they wear a bulletproof vest, for instance. Now, when you get that question, you will have to write it in terms of force because the force is what hurts you if a force acts on you. So you're, you're going to write it in the form F net equals delta P, or you can go M delta V over delta T. Now that this stays constant, and please remember that for any direct proportion, you can only say two things are directly proportional if any, everything else in that equation remains constant. So if delta P is constant because the mass is constant, when a bullet hits you, the, uh, it's going to stop eventually. So it hits you at a certain speed, it stops at a certain speed. So this is constant. And only because that is constant, I can then say, that F net, the net force acting on us, is directly proportional to 1 over delta T or inversely proportional to delta T. And then you write your sentence and you say, um, therefore, F net will decrease as delta T increase and we will hurt less. So all those questions, please go and write the equation in that form when you answer it. The other questions are the follow through type of questions. Now you need to think, why do I follow through when I play golf? Why do I follow through when I play tennis? If you want something to leave at the greatest speed, this is what you're going to use. Now it's the delta V that we're interested in. So if we look at the equation in the form M delta V equals F delta T, again, we can only, oh, can you see there's a bit of a boo-boo because they're not equal, They direct. there's a direct proportion sign because if you take away the constants, we change it into a direct proportion. So we can do the same here because we can say mass is constant the force that I can apply on my tennis racket or golf club or whatever I'm using is constant. And because those two things are constant, I can say that the change in velocity is directly proportional to the change in time. And as the time increases, the change in velocity will increase. And therefore, my final velocity that the ball leaves the club at or the tennis racket at will increase. Please use the correct equation. If you use this one for a follow through question, you're going to get zero. So please be very careful. So this is the part here. Apply the impulse concept on airbags and catching balls and those type of things. So please, this is important. Make sure you look at some past paper questions and see if you can answer it using the right equation. Moving on, conservation of momentum is actually the easiest one, but it's misspotted. I don't know, people don't see it and try and use um, equations of motion and energy and all kinds of things. If it's a conservation of mo a momentum question, it's normally a collision. So when two things are hitting each other, you need to think momentum and go to the momentum part of your information sheet. 
So an isolated system, again, in chemistry, uh, in chemistry means that it's got a lid on. In physics, it means that there's no energy, external energy lost by the system or gained by the system. So it means there's no external force acting on the object. That's important. Now, so if two cars collide, it's only the force between the two cars that's important. Now, not the friction and all kinds of other things there. Now, the conservation of momentum states that the total momentum in an isolated system remains constant or is conserved. You don't have to say both. Now, what that means is that the total momentum initial before a collision is going to be equal to the total momentum final. And because you know we are so nice in science, that even gets you a mark most of the time. Now, there are a few scenarios. You can have one object hitting another object and they could be moving in opposite directions. So they uh, move in opposite directions, they move separately from each other and they move separately from each other after. And this gives us the general equation that you can actually use for any of these scenarios because then you're going to just say, and this is why I like U's and V's and not the I's because now there's so many subscripts here. I'm going to just move the, this away a little bit make space so we're going to say momentum of object one plus momentum of object two before the collision so it's initial initial is equal to momentum of object one plus momentum of object two and this will be final final you don't have to write both those equations so now you know momentum is just mass times velocity and please that's all it is it's not energy it's just mass times by velocity, so it's the mass of object one times by the velocity of object one, initial. Can you see all the subscripts? So what I like doing is just saying M1, U1, plus M2, U2, you're welcome to use the others if you want to, is equal to M2, V2, plus M1, V1. Obviously, one plus two, two plus one doesn't matter. Now you're going to fill in your values, remembering the direction, because if to the right was positive, you need to remember that any velocity to the left is going to be negative. And then you've got your equation. Now this can change when sometimes nothing is moving. So this is for an explosion type question. So in an explosion, you have one big thing and it shoots in part so that part goes that way and that part goes that way we only look at linear momentum so we're not going to give it here an angle now in the initially there is no momentum so the initial momentum is zero because nothing is moving and then again that will be equal to m2 v2 plus m1 v1 so in a in an explosion type question remember that the initial velocity is zero that's also for someone standing still throwing a ball, if you're standing on ice or a, a skateboard, those type of questions are sometimes asked. And then the other one is if two objects are joined together after it. So if you have two objects and after they collide, they move away together. So you have object one hitting object two standing still normally then just remember that its initial velocity is zero and after the collision they move as one object you often get these type of questions as well then you have momentum before so it's going to be the same m1 u1 plus m2 u2 so i'm just going to write initial momentum then final momentum you can add the masses together because they're moving at, a, at the same velocity so you can just call it v because or VF if that's what you're doing and you can add up the masses but please remember you can always go back <clears throat> to this original equation fill in your values and calculate now the elastic collision part comes in here although we're going to look at it a little bit more in the in the energy video but elastic collisions just means that kinetic energy stays constant so please remember that energy is a scalar and it doesn't depend on direction. So if you look again at these laws, it says the total linear momentum of an isolated system remains constant. That is always true. 
momentum stays constant if the system is isolated. Now here you can see an elastic collision means that momentum are still go is still going to be constant, but also kinetic energy, please not any energy. So in an elastic collision, the kinetic energy is conserved. So often at the end of a momentum question, they say, say to you, is this um, collision elastic and prove it. So if you want to say that a, a collision is elastic or not, you cannot just assume that it's elastic. So you cannot say kinetic energy before the collision equals kinetic energy after, because that's what you are trying to prove. So you have to go and say EK initial. And you add up all the EKs of everything that's moving. So it's going to be EK of object 1 initial plus EK of object 2 initial. And if there's 10 objects, you add up all their kinetic energies. So it's the total kinetic energy. And then you go and do the same for the final. You're going to say EK final and you work it out. You go EK final for object 1 plus EK final for object 2. You go and get an answer. And you're going to get an answer in joules. And remember the equation for kinetic energy is half mv squared. Don't forget the squared. And you'll get an answer here of 200 joules. I'm just making up a value. And you'll get an answer here of 150 joules. And if that is your answer, you actually have to answer the question still. You have to say, therefore, in the elastic collision, because EK initial is not equal to EK final. If they were equal, you'll say, therefore, it is elastic because EK initial is equal to EK final. So please do not just go and say that they are equal immediately and yeah, you need to actually prove it.